Hi everyone, um, for today's veg I thought it'd be a good time to talk about something like this, something a bit more, I'm gonna call it serious but it's more just heavy more than anything. Okay, um, apologies if this looks a bit odd but I said if I look a bit odd because I went to my friend's house yesterday, dog and a cat, allergies, body isn't reacting well, my eye is like bright red. My skin is bright red. I'm just one big tomato. <laughs> okay, right, so for a bit of background context, I first went to the GP on my own, um, asking for help about my mental health when I was 13, 12? Young, I honestly don't remember, it was like really blurry. I think it was 2014, so I must have been February, so 12, about to turn 14, 13. Mm, maths. Um, that didn't go well. Uh, GP wise, yeah, it did. I, my doctor's really nice. He left, but yeah, I'm the type of child who went to the GP more than is healthy. So if anything, I had quite a good relationship with him. But um, my parents didn't take it well, obviously. So that kind of made me a lot worse than I was before, which was already hard to do because I was on the verge of death at that point. Um, and then I returned with my mum asking for help last summer, I think it must have been. I had already told her a while before, maybe like in April, but uh, I didn't want to get around to it until I'd finished school because I didn't need extra stress in case it went badly. Um, so yeah, that first time round, uh, my parents didn't take it well at first. My mum tried to help at some stage. Uh, we tried looking for private therapy because my family's way of thinking and culture is very much centered around private healthcare because um they're both from countries where that was what you grew up with at least so um they tried looking for that at first couldn't find anything it's like it doesn't exist in london or in the uk like private um therapy for kids um we're covered with bupa insurance but obviously they don't do that or pregnancy or cancer i think which is like the three main things people need healthcare for um which i found for weird but yeah um what else uh so yeah second time around ask my mom for help it was a bit more specific in that case it was very much i think i have bipolar disorder and my mom was like okay i doubt that but if you really think you need some sort of help let's go um yeah obviously the th i'm not gonna go into detail about why my parents took it so badly at first but the second time around I convinced them a bit better, so did my new GP, so it went all right. I got referred to CAMS. Um, we were told it would be quite a long waiting list. It wasn't. It took a couple weeks, really, and then maybe, like, another month. So I went, like, in August, September, got referred in October, which, yeah, again, isn't too bad. Um, something that I really have to point out about my experience or whatever is where I live because it influences a lot in that whole process and obviously my experience with CAMS. Um, I live in Westminster. I live on the last street of Westminster connecting to Brent. So, good area to say the least. Um, lots of money. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm also like, my general areas and where I situate myself most of the time is Kensington and Chelsea. Uh, so from all sides I am very well off. I live in a very good area, an area with a lot of money and a lot of funding. Which obviously Kensington and Chelsea doesn't have the best um, <laughs> reputation right now because of the whole Grenfell Tower thing, but honestly it's, it's very believable they're not the best. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's an area which is very well funded, uh, but has a lot of poor people living in it, so it's a bit, it's a bit confusing. Um, but that really influ influences in it uh, with the waiting list and also the type of care I got and I really want to emphasise that because uh, yeah, my I got referred to a clinic in Kensington and Chelsea literally a five minute walk away from my school. My school is around this whole like Notting Hill area. I'm not going to be too specific with that obviously but I'm leaving like in a week so it doesn't really matter to be honest. There's a lot of schools there. Um, but yeah, very well funded area. Area which is filled with a lot of public sector get that dollar for the borrow type thing so um yeah gonna say it again very well funded a lot of money there so 
I think that definitely I have to point out that that influences in my experience because it probably means that I got the best care that you could have got from cams because the thing that really put me off about it and I was so scared to ask for help with was because my friends had told me about friends who had always been worse off than me like I'm not gonna lie my mental health yeah has you know reached the verge of you know wanting to end my life or whatever but uh, I know people who have been a lot worse who are a lot worse whose mental health affects them differently to mine I'm not just validating my one but yeah if that makes sense and uh, they'd had terrible experiences with cams and I just kind of thought of, of cams as this one big entity but the truth is it obviously influences from your where you live and uh, how much funding that place it has how many poor people live there and it's a harsh reality but it's something that we're not hidden from like everyone knows it the NHS is losing funding as quickly <laughs> as is possible and the places that are left with some of the funding are the richer areas and even then um my clinic you could tell it was losing funding because people were leaving like you know people were leaving like mayflies honestly it was kind of crazy but i hadn't really clicked until i kind of finished my first thing of sessions anyway more to go into the details um yeah i got uh, I don't know how many sessions I got in total, but let's just say it's more than six. Usually they give you six, you have a review, um, and then if they think it hasn't done much, you get another six. That's what I was told. Most people don't get up to the first six because that's how badly funded it is. Um, most people leave before they get to the full six because it just goes so badly for them. And I'm obviously really lucky that that didn't happen to me. Um, my psychologist, my first one at least, was lovely. Uh, she was great. I had a good relationship with her, I'd say. Um, but again, definitely influences, probably with her pay. <laughs> um, yeah, she left before I got there. I don't know. <laughs> she left before I finished my full session, so um, I was changed to a, a local psychiatrist, I think they're called, um, halfway through my sessions. But again, I had so many sessions, I honestly can't tell you um, exactly how many. But yeah, important note, I, it went so well for me because of the people and the problem with camps is that um, the staff, the people who are meant to be helping you just sometimes aren't that great and I don't know whose fault that is because just I had a really good experience but I'd be lying if I said I didn't know that that was because of the money involved, obviously good area, best staff. It all makes sense, you know. Um, so yeah, I was, I had my first session, oh my god, when was it? October, I'd say, maybe November, can't tell you exact dates either. So beginning of the school year, and I had my last one June, I'd say. So I've been in there a very long time, a lot longer than some people do. Um, yeah, it's approximately one every week. Uh, obviously that depends on the person, but for me it's one every week. Uh... So it was kind of meant to be a lot less, but it's, again, you have some weeks where, you know, can't do it for some reason, uh, it gets delayed a bit. Then obviously I had to change who was um, evaluating me and stuff, so that obviously influenced in it too. Um, but yeah, personal experience. I, like I said at the beginning of this, uh, I thought I had bipolar disorder. Um, I told them this first session, I told my GP this, I told everybody this because I was very clear that I wasn't very clear on having it, although I kind of became obsessed with it, I was just very clear that I needed an answer because I had a lot of questions about everything about me, about how my brain worked and I needed answers with it. <laughs> and the one thing my therapist I think did wrong in my case was um, not mention it at all like just never we used we used all these words and afterwards she explained to me that that was just because I should be using the words I'm comfortable with but I felt really guilty afterwards realizing that um they didn't plan on diagnosing me with something and that I was using vocabulary that may not apply to me and obviously I didn't know this at the time but it just didn't so uh once I was faced with that reality oof worst few sessions I'd had in a while um yeah I had to ask them to diagnose me with something because I thought a label was important 
in my case and um, they said that they don't like to focus on labels and I'm starting to see that now I see how it's important and how it can definitely affect a way a child or a teenager sees their mental health but um or mental illness but I thought I wouldn't be validated without that label how could I say that um some stuff wasn't my fault or some de decisions I was making weren't my fault that they weren't me doing them when I didn't have that label to say that that I was just telling people oh yes I have bad mental health but how bad is it I don't know here's some you know it was kind of like all these behaviors that I had because of my mental health or decisions I made because of it the bad decisions but also just any decisions um the things I would I could later regret and I knew I would the things I didn't like about me if I didn't have something to explain it a label to explain it then I was just a shit person and that terrified me so they clearly told me no you don't have bipolar disorder uh you would be a lot worse if you had bipolar disorder and I was like all right fair didn't take it very well um again that's fine I think it's a perfectly okay mistake especially I was I was 15 I'm I'm only 16 but I think I, I have this obsession or like our culture now has this obsession that we're adults and we're meant to think like adults and we're meant to know we're meant to be wise and know everything and I don't and I never will and I was I am a child who for a while was and sometimes still am I'm obsessed with my mental health and how my brain works because it's scary it's a, it's a really scary thing to think about therefore when I was told that I didn't have this thing it like hit me like a ton of bricks I was like oh my god I've been telling everyone that I think I have this and I don't and there's people who have this and they're so badly they're so badly off you know like their lives must be so terrible and here I am trying to compare myself to that no it's okay to make mistakes because I was just a kid who was scared I was a kid who was so scared of dying and not being okay and having chemicals in my brain that weren't working correctly but that's okay if you learn from your mistakes I don't consider it a mistake the fact that I it wasn't self-diagnosing because I didn't self-diagnose. I went straight to somebody to try and get it actually diagnosed. And when they told me I didn't have that, I was like, okay, well, what about all the symptoms that I have that connect with it? And they were like, you can have symptoms. Um, but diagnosis are just labels to help you understand those symptoms. And if you can understand the symptoms without having the label, the camera stopped filming halfway through because it does that after 12 minutes and 17 seconds, apparently. Um, apparently I've never filmed for that long, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, where was I? Yeah, don't need, you don't need that label, you can have it, I still, if I didn't have the whole depression and anxiety label then I feel like I wouldn't be validated by a lot of aspects of our culture and society because you can't really be taken seriously as somebody who has mental health problems without that label, without a diagnosis, which again a lot of people can't medically access and that's a huge problem but it's also something that isn't going to be fixed anytime soon because we live in that Great Britain <laughs> we live in the Tory Great Britain and that's apparently not going to change for a while so all I'm trying to say is that if you if you know your symptoms if you if you know you have this problem and this problem and this problem you could this isn't really advice this is just kind of what I learned you can just like google those symptoms they take that test that says you may or may not have this thing and you can listen to it and that's okay but also you don't necessarily have to i became obsessed with labels and i know i've been told my whole life by the internet by youtube that labels aren't that important they can be to you but they don't have to be though and i don't think i fully understood what that meant until i went through it and I'm definitely not telling people to not use labels because it helped me forever it still helps me sometimes you know to say that this thing that I have sometimes is disassociation or that I but sometimes I just call it spacing out that's my personal decision and maybe in somebody else's case they might they might have a different name for that or they might have a diagnosis for that and that's okay and people's experiences are different yeah I didn't expect to give a more of this I just wanted to talk about my experience with cams but yeah I'd really like to hear other people's aspects on this even like just in the comments because 
all I heard was horror stories and I still think the NHS and CAMS is one big horror story because it is going to the shit and just because there's one good experience and even then it wasn't amazing I left CAMS a few weeks ago and I'm already down here again like I'm, t I'm doing terribly um but I can't blame that on them I think I don't know if that means that they didn't do anything or um that it's just me not coping very well with change I'm leaving school I'm it's just a lot of change happening right now but they did do something and even though they might have not realized they did that I hadn't realized they did that either and it just hit me now and yeah I guess you could that's always a lesson to learn from anything so yeah I'd really like to hear other people's opinions on this other people's experiences but I also know that they're gonna be there's gonna be a lot of bad ones and that's not okay I've been saying that's okay a lot in this video but that isn't okay and I don't think people can expect change until we start talking about it more because the people who are going to make the change are the ones that need to hear it and even though they might know stories are the way it starts so if you have anything to share if you have anything to say I think this is really interesting now that I'm not involved in it anymore so let's talk about this mental health is important I know it's not mental health awareness months anymore but I think veg is the best time for me to talk about stuff like this because uh yeah, I have a lot of stuff to talk about that I usually don't because I worry it's too heavy, but I'm gonna lose all my subscribers anyway! I get about 30 views on each video now, so if you are watching this, that's, uh, thanks for sticking around, I guess, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>